So my name is Johan Pröve. Um, I'm a biologist by training and joined BioHealthCare about uh, 36 years ago. Um, I spent about four years in the United States uh, heading a data management organization and um, spent uh, the rest of my life um, at Bayer as well. Uh, so in total about 36 years always in clinical data management. I was involved in EDC rollout, uh, have been involved in uh, the risk-based monitoring activities, electronic health records and several other initiatives at Bayer. Main topics that I worked on were rollout of electronic data capture, the introduction of risk-based monitoring, as well as uh, looking into new technologies such as uh, the use of electronic health records and mobile technology at Bayer. And so the, uh, the risk-based monitoring is uh, originating from the risk concept itself and uh, the risk management is something that has been introduced many 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 years ago in for instance the production area or in the machinery and I had been in contact with uh, guys from the production area and, and they explained to me what they do like exchanging machines or pumps uh, in the production area just to avoid that these uh, uh, pieces in the production line fail unexpectedly uh, you know having the uh, the issues and uh, the problems uh, deferred to the uh, to the output of uh, the production line something that nobody likes and uh, the same actually applies to clinical trials. Nobody likes clinical trials to fail and in particular not fail towards the end of a trial. And uh, that is the sort of the basis of risk-based monitoring uh, to manage the risks, to identify the risks first of course, but then to manage the risk uh, in order to avoid any uh, late surprises in the outcome. So in, in the past um, when the pharmaceutical industry, the pharmaceutical companies uh, developed um, protocols, uh, case report forms or the program for a new drug to be developed, uh, they usually took um, a protocol and then you know it was written uh, at a green table and um, based on what a project leader and what the study team, the project team knew about uh, that compound and how to develop a drug. Now just recently um, companies realized that the protocols may be too complicated, that uh, the data we capture are too many and uh, that something has to happen about it and uh, that introduced the term uh, quality by design. Uh, that means rather than finding out halfway through a clinical trial that the trial is way too complicated or that the patients don't exist, uh, think early on, you know, is this trial even feasible? Where are the risks in this trial? And what is it that we can implement to make sure that right from the very beginning a trial has a chance to be successful, not necessarily with respect to the outcome, but at least with respect to the quality of the data. The, the risks in a clinical trial or in a program um, or already um, can be identified at the very beginning of the start of the very first trial. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being that protocols should be designed in a particular way not to overload protocols so that uh, there are not too many in an exclusion criteria um, and that is already quality by design. But in a second step, once uh, a trial started, then of course the, the data that have been captured by the sites or by external third parties, those data need to follow also and, and meet quality expectations. And uh, in the past that had not necessarily been the case. Mm -hmm. uh, the industry captured data uh, that were not necessarily required um, and that is something that could be avoided in future by applying the quality by design approach. So quality, quality by design is uh, something that has mainly three dimensions. And uh, these three dimensions are the quality of the data, the quality of the, the trial, the program, or the protocol, whatever it is. The uh, second dimension are the timelines because it doesn't make sense uh, to have uh, a great outcome a great quality, uh, but to get there it takes 10 years to develop the drug. So the timelines have to be taken into account when designing a, a program. 
And the third aspect, of course, are the costs, because if I have a product that only makes a certain profit or is likely to make only a certain profit, it doesn't make too much sense uh, to develop a drug at an outrageous cost and not taking into account uh, that the market may not be available. In total, when you, when you look at these three uh, dimensions or these three factors, it is uh, not something that can be defined by just one point uh, in a three-dimensional uh, area or scale. It is more like uh, a cloud or an area that moves between and amongst these three uh, dimensions, quality, timelines and costs. Which means you, you can make certain compromises in the quality even if the, the data are not that important. You can be a little faster or a little slower on the timelines if your product is really promising. And, and thirdly, uh, the costs may also have um, um, certain factors that uh, certain factors influence the cost depending on the quality and timelines. I think when uh, looking at quality by design and now implementing or talking about the risk management, one has to uh, take into account that risk always has a negative um, um, meaning to almost everybody that talks about risk. 